Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. Story number one. World Obliteration, Obstruction, and Prevention System. Written by H. Nocturna. Then Ran and his family intently stared at the screen through which the final devastating news was being broadcast. The flickering blue hue saturated the wall behind him as the unbelievable words were being uttered by the news reporter. I am receiving confirmation that nuclear weapons have been deployed by the Furnine Nation and the Confederate Lakes has launched their retaliatory strike. I've been told that altogether over 5,000 nuclear weapons have been fired by two nations. As we have feared, this is the beginning of the end. Find shelter and take solace in our final moments. Find your loved ones and spend every last moment you can with them. Signing off. For the final time, this is you, young Critch. Good luck and Godspeed. The final newscast was punctuated by the shrill alarm of the emergency broadcast system as it repeated the doomsday message over and over again. Denren continued staring at the screen with his mouth hung open as he felt his arm being tugged and cries whimpering from his child. Eventually, his eyes caught his mates and his nervous sack kicked into gear, releasing a storm of hormones and signals to protect his progeny and fight the inevitable end. First, he had to get out of the city. Though he resided in the outskirts of the metropolis, he knew that the target that their city presented would mean that they would be immediately affected when those bombs detonated. He didn't know how long he had to evacuate, but he knew that he had to try. Then Ren ushered his family out to their transportation vehicle and directed it away from the immediate danger. There would be no surviving the catastrophe, but it didn't mean that they had to die today. A short while after they had exited the city bounds, a bright white hue lit up the reflection and front window of his transportation vehicle, and reality set in. The world was ending. A few weeks went by and the world began to dim. Then Ren and his family survived the initial wave of destruction from the nuclear war, but it had only delayed their end. His mate and he had spent their time consoling their children, trying to convince them that the world hadn't ended, and that things would return to normal shortly. There was no need to worry them. But despite their best efforts, their progeny had detected the worry and distress in their voices. There was no hiding it in the darkened skies as nuclear winter began to set in. He had lost all hope and was just trying to survive one day at a time. As the temperature of their world dramatically dropped and they ran out of provisions, Denrin and his family huddled together for warmth and awaited their demise. During another long, cold night or day, they could no longer tell whether their star was still shining. He noticed a light hovering above. Then another light appeared in the sky in the distance. Another burst into existence a little closer. The first light, he noticed, the one above them grew larger and larger until his became apparent that it was some kind of vehicle. Did some form of government survive? Were these ships there to save them? The craft landed in a field near their position, and suddenly they were surrounded by beings in an assortment of differently shaped suits. Then when attacked the alien beings, driven by fear and instinct to protect his family, as he charged the nearest one, he collapsed before he knew it, and was filled with pain as his body constricted and twitched. As abrupt as the sensation emerged, it subsided. They fought to breathe as he regained control of his body and noticed pain in his torso. When he glanced down, he saw two small metal prongs sticking out of his body. As he pushed himself off the ground in another attempt to attack the invaders, he was immediately subdued again as the pain returned and he lost control of his movement and his consciousness. When then ran awoke again, his optical organ first detected bright lights and his auditory system picked up faint clicks and beeps. He pushed himself into an upright position, but was immediately pushed back down by one of the alien beings. But it wasn't forceful. It felt like he was being warned not to get up too fast. Stay down, you're still recovering and adjusting to your new environment, said the alien. You're safe here. We mean you no harm. Mama, my family, he started. 
Are, are they okay? Where are they? Your family is here with you. They're all safe and healthy. Where am I? What happened? Why, why did you attack us? Relax. You weren't being attacked. We are part of a world obliteration, obstruction, and prevention system. We were trying to save you, but you attacked our agents and had to be subdued for your safety. What do you remember? The world obliteration, obstruction, and prevention system? I've never heard of it. Do you remember the nuclear war? Nuclear war? Y y yes. We are, well, we're here to save what remains of your species. Now please, rest. All your questions will be answered in time. But for now, you need to rest as we decontaminate you and your family. The alien pressed a button, and he quickly lost consciousness again. Hello, Zenran. My name is Sizzak Crane. I'm an agent of the World Obliteration, Obstruction, and Prevention System. Whoops. Thank you for being patient with us. It's been a real trial saving the millions of people that remain of your species, said the tall alien with eight appendages and a rectangular head. Surrounding him were several other aliens of different size and shape. It was clear that they were in multiple species mixed together here. Hello, um... Theron paused to think of what to ask first. Thank you for saving us, but... Who are you people? My team and I are part of an organization that saves species from the brink of destruction caused by their own undoing. Whoops, the alien chuckled. What do you mean? There's an entire alien organization that goes around saving other aliens from destroying themselves? That's exactly right. I know it sounds ridiculous, but you'd be surprised at how many species are hell-bent on destroying themselves before they achieve space travel. Without this organization... There would barely be any species in the galaxy. Denrin couldn't believe it. Aliens. Saving other aliens. From themselves. This is common. Species destroying their planet by nuclear war. More common than you'd believe. In fact, Herod says people here. He gestured to a small, round alien, balancing on a single leg. Did the exact same thing about thirty of your years ago. It was Whoops that stepped in and saved his people. The alien waved one of his three arms and turned to bright pink. Yeah, said the alien, embarrassed to continue further. And so did Yacht's people above a century ago. He gestured to another alien that towered over him. In fact, it's the third most common reason that aliens go try to go extinct. Third most? What are the other causes of their... Well, uh... We burnt all our naturally occurring carbon-based energy sources on our planet, fueling a global climate change that doomed our species, chimed in another alien. It wasn't as immediate as nuclear winter, but it was just as destructive in the long run. Yep, that was the first leading cause for our intervention. Other top causes for Whoop's intervention are scientific experiments involving exotic matter, complete utilization of all planetary resources, biological warfare, societal collapse due to rogue AI. And the list goes on and on. To date, Whoop's has saved over 200 alien species. So, all of your people were saved by Whoop's? Sizek glanced around the room. Yep. All of our species were saved except for Barry's people there. The humans, uh, they, they, they were the founders of our organization. Founders? That means you guys didn't kill yourselves. Uh, yep. We were close, though, replied the alien with two legs, two arms, and a head that protruded from the top of his torso. We almost did all the things that we've saved others from Ms. Sizek mentioned, but we somehow came together in a single people, achieved interstellar travel, and survived. As time went on and we traveled the distant worlds, we noticed a reoccurring theme. Civilization is pretty common. They just tend to destroy the planet before they can leave it. After centuries of traveling the stars alone, we realized that being the only space-faring species was quite lonely. So we created whoops to help guide others from their extinction. I mean, technically, it should be a whoops with an H in there. But we couldn't figure out a good word to fit for the acronym, and so we dropped it. Nenrin's nerve sack was racing with a million of thoughts and questions, but suddenly his species were saved. They were not alone, and the aliens were pretty cool. Especially the humans. End 
of story. Story number two. From a death world they came. Written by Pepper Leon. Honorable members of the Galactic Council, on behalf of the people of Roselia, I'm here to passionately request that you all vote yeah to this motion. Humans might be scary, and deities know how insane their disregard for their own lives is, but to not accept them into our community will be an incomprehensible, unprecedented, and frankly, idiotic loss. When the supervolcano erupted on the homeworld of the Ugrans, they were the first to be there, braving the poisonous air, the lava flood, and the sky that will forever be darkened. They scoured the planet for survivors, and only because of them we do not have to strike the name of the Ogans from the list of sapient beings. When the Tuxlu civil war erupted, they swooped in and destroyed all in-flight nuclear missiles, sometimes with their own lives by purposely colliding their in-air vehicles with them to prevent a race from deleting their own existence. When the Kugar calamity struck, they daringly breached the quarantine to stop the plague from killing each and every person. They relentlessly and tirelessly researched, without any personal benefit, the cure for the pandemic disease, and provided comfort for those whose bodies had been too far racked by the virus so they could pass away in peace. When the Zaya's Stargate exploded and caused a gravity wave to dislodge some planetoids on a collision course with their whole world, they were the only ones crazy enough to sacrifice a fleet by overloading their ship's dimension drive in mass, deflecting the planetoids enough to miss. I can go on and on, listing all the kindness that humanity has shown us, but it'll take forever to sing their praises. Rather, I implore you, I beg you, please vote, yeah. For from a death world they came, but life they have brought. Thank you. End of story. I just quickly want to thank the Tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia Barkey, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albard and Gaster, Arcadian, Lord Azrakal, and Joe Kumbaka.